Hello and welcome to another week of energy and star sign readings with myself, Thomas Janak. Now we're looking at the last week of February, 22nd to the 28th of February. We're now in the star sign of Pisces, my star sign, yay! And on the 27th, um, we have a full moon. Okay? Now this full moon also dubbed the snow moon will be a moon that um or the energy on that day which is the second last day before the week is over will actually go into energy of um releasing so i have no idea what the over energy is going to say now but um an energy of letting things go is definitely coming in at the end of the week okay so let's have a look at the overall energy for the week of february the 22nd to the 28th let's have a look what the guides have got for us we have the screech owl and the frog in short, the overall energy of the week tells us that as long as we hmm, don't take crap, sounds a bit harsh, but as long as we don't hold back from um, expressing ourselves if we're put in a corner, and they're not talking about aggression here, but you know, sometimes could say something and it is discouraging. Um, tell people not to discourage you just because they can't see it happening uh, maybe they should, have, should look at themselves maybe there isn't stuff happening in their lives because they haven't got what it takes or they haven't got the guts or whatever that case is what I'm getting is as the over energy for the week is to watch out for people discouraging us or all of us and making sure that it doesn't go unnoticed and that you say something about it because the other animal that we have this week is the frog which means no matter what life throws at us at there no matter what life throws at us we will be just fine so on the whole this is a really high energy because it's the energy that that tells all of us to realize that we're all good enough the way we are. That does not mean if you feel you want to better yourself, you know, which is not a bad thing. Like obviously, yes, that's something to, to, to look at and to work towards. But this is a week where you shouldn't or we shouldn't um, go like, oh, failing at this and I can't do this and I can't do this. No self-doubt. Really important to, in a way, keep your heads high and, and, and have no, um, what's the word? no feeling of low self-esteem now if you have low self-esteem that that is not going to change overnight like the what the guides are saying is it starts with you if you believe you can't do it you can't do it because the frog is an amphibian which means he can live on land and on water the analogy is that no matter what life throws us at, at us uh, this week february 22nd to 28th we will just be fine so that's actually a good thing um, to have for this week. Now we're going into the very first star sign um, of the week, which is Pisces. Let's have a look at Pisces. Pisceans. We have the wood duck and the groundhog. What that means for us is to realize that we don't have to prove anything, right? The wood duck is the animal that is sort of saying, you know, um, I need to get waterproof uh, before I um, before I can do things and now you can do things. I need to stop this because you can hear the cat and the, the litter trace right next to the camera. So let's just see where this is going and um, we will be there back um, to do Pisces. So. We had that quite a lot in the past, that the cats interfered. 
as they do. Anyway, we're now going into the very first star sign, which is Pisces. And um, as mentioned earlier, before I stopped the video, we had the wood duck and the groundhog. What that means is that this week for us Pisceans is important to remember that we are already where we are supposed to be. This is a week to remember and probably give ourselves a pat on the back for all the achievements uh, we've had in, in this lifetime, maybe. Okay? And to not procrastinate. Okay. Pisces, we are all really about emotions and heart. And we're not necessarily the star sign of procrastination per se, but because things tend to be slow and sluggish, especially in sort of COVID times, um, what the guides are saying to us, don't get hijacked by, by that feeling of oh, everything is slow, right? Um, and don't procrastinate and don't linger. Um, don't stay with feelings that have a low energy because, again, this is the message here, you are good enough. So that's actually not a bad message for us Pisceans. That was Pisces going into Aries. Let's have a look. Aries, look into your domestic situation. What is going on at home right now? Make sure your, your life at home is good and you feel comfortable. Be nice, you guys. All right. We have a little, bit of, little, little domestic of our own here. <laughs> Right, so Aries, look at the situation at home, make sure you're comfortable there, confident there, and also make sure that within the, the space that you live in, that you have your own little areas where you can retreat to, um, because energetically speaking, new opportunities can come to you, Aries, um, if you're not in a place of feeling this isn't quite my place so reflect and observe your home life and your thoughts that you have as they unfold wherever it is that you live okay now we're going into taurus very fidget we're going into taurus and we're looking at the week of february the 22nd to 28th let's have a look Richard, is there a reason why you're lying on the cards? Oh, because you can. <laughs> okay. Taurians, you have the bald eagle and the blue heron. Again, what they're saying is um, new opportunities are coming, right? It feels like, you know, we're heading towards spring, metabolisms get quicker, things work a little better, and, and so for Taurus, um, better times are ahead better times are coming and because you have the blue heron sort of a, a bird that just stands on the water and one uh, in the water on one leg and when the fish comes he just grabs it the the um, message the analogy here is to say you know and to allow yourself to just go like yeah new things are coming for me i do not have to plan everything i do not have to uh, stress over everything Things will come to you, and when you feel this is for you, you just take it. Okay? That was Torians going into Gemini. Sorry, drawn to another deck. Gemini. Bit more difficult energetically for Geminis. Um, in the last week uh, of February 2021 because you have the Raven and the Jaguar. So what they're saying is you are going, it's not that you're going through a massive 
uh, transformation, but you're going through reflecting and judging things too harshly. So you remember everything that happened and you don't want to go there again. That kind of feeling is what I'm getting. Um, and so it, rather than going to a panic, what the guides are saying is, no, you're not that person anymore, right? You have survived 100% of all your crap and there you are, you're still here. And so what they're saying to you this week um, for Gemini is to realize that what you're going through, you're going through it because it is now a good time for anything that has or that affects you from your past um, to let that go. And then you have the Jaguar, which is an animal with, with, with you know, unique dots. But the depiction that I have is um, the Jaguar turning into a panther. Okay. I get that I get asked that a lot. I've had these cards for, for 20 years and I think I threw the box away 20 years ago and I have no idea what they called and who did them. All I know is it was the first ever deck that came to me and I've been using them for two decades now and um, so um, please don't ask me who, who did them. <laughs> okay, so back to uh, Gemini. Because you have the, the Jaguar, which means you have to be your own your true authentic self and when you're going into hiding which is basically you being inside the panther which has black fur which means you stand out more in nature even though you're trying to hide what the guys are saying to you in 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 a roundabout way is that be you at all times be your authentic self and you do not have to adopt the situation then that aren't quite for you. Okay? I have to say this because obviously, you know, we're dealing with energies here. And the energy of Gemini feels unresolved. There's still a lot of stuff that hasn't been um, fully let go of. And that's what the guides are saying to you is allow yourself to let things go. They give me um, the, the imagery of water, which means tears are sacred medicine. Right? Let it all go as best you can. Um, that's really all you, you can do. And don't hide who you truly are. Okay? That also means that you're good enough the way you are. So there's no need to hide. That was Gemini going into Cancer. Let's have a look. Healing seems to be um, a theme here a little bit because as you had with, with Gemini, you know, letting things go. Cancerians have the bear and all bears really stand for, for emotional, emotional um, healing, cleansing, letting things go, but also acknowledging that there are things still inside you that have knocked you about in, in the past and that they still have some sort of a hold over you. And you have the calumet, which is basically um, a sacred pipe. So what the guides are saying is, in your case, the easiest thing to do is to try not to panic over things, try not to um, stress over things, and find a lot of quiet time um, to, again, let things go. And also because you have the pipe here, which obviously means there is smoke, and... Um, Smoke is cleansing, so it would also be a good idea for Cancerians to just start cleansing again your living space, if that makes sense. What, what I get so far, um, looking at a couple of star signs that, that, that we looked at here, um, is that a lot of the things that are happening that are now leaving you as beings um, can easily be reflected upon at home. So maybe being a bit more isolated right now, having a bit more time um, is not a bad thing. What I get for Cancerians is, um, what I got for Gemini as well, is to make sure that in your home you um, have some boundaries so that you have your own space and your own time there. Okie dokie, that was uh, Cancerians. Um, we're looking at a week of February the 22nd to the 28th, 2021, the last week of February and we're in the star sign of 
Pisces. And now we're going into Leo. Okie dokie. Osprey and Ferret. Leos. What you need to realize, or to realize, is that with every day that goes on, you are making progress in seeing what is really important and what isn't. So my feeling is for Leos is that you're realizing now, you realize now that stressing over things you cannot control is a waste of time. And so keep up that knowledge, keep up that feeling of saying, like, yeah, okay, I can't control it, so it won't affect me or I won't let it affect me. That's really, really important. The other thing that I'm getting is for you to realize uh, this week that sometimes, and this is not so much because you're Leos, if that makes sense, you know, obviously represented by, you know, a strong animal, because the Leo is not only strong, but it's also very social, if that makes sense. So, so don't just, don't look at the uh, the picture of the, of the lion um, so much this week, because one of the things that comes up here with the ferret, is that you are quite intelligent, you, you, you know what you're doing, you also know what you want and what you don't want, and somehow, sometimes when you try to phrase it, phrase things and say things, it comes out all wrong. <laughs> so watch your communication, um, maybe even work on your communication skills. Um, and the other thing that I'm getting is, um, to use the calmness and again now they show me the lion um, which basically is is saying you know um, I can sleep hours on end which then gives me the energy that I need to to get to get shit done right so that doesn't mean you have to sleep 17 hours <laughs> it just means like that 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 in calmness lies the ability to communicate clearer in a rested soul okie dokie that was leo going into virgo drawn to a different deck virgos remember this week that we all came here as specks of dust to explore and evolve and accumulate all there is to accumulate, um, coming back again and again and again, rebirth. Um, and so what the guides are saying to you is, remember, you do have a home, a spiritual home, that might not be that obvious at times. So if you feel you don't belong somewhere, remember that you belong to this massive universe. And anyone and everyone in it is, a, is an integral part of making it a better place. And so, again, this goes into a low, low self-esteem, more, more or less, uh, for Virgos, where the guides are saying is, don't, don't think you're not worth it. Right? And certainly do not listen to people that make you feel less, because you have the elk. And the elk is an animal with antlers, and antlers mean protection, so you're fully protected by your guides. And so, um, and the other thing obviously about the elk is that um, you wouldn't mess with one, right? So even though the elk is, is by no means an aggressive uh, animal, um, he nonetheless shows up here as your spirit guide for this very week. And, um, and in the calmness that, you know, sort of the deer types all seem to have, um, is still a very strong being that could potentially uh, even do damage when provoked, even though they are normally skittish and, and run, so nobody's saying to you, be aggressive. What they're saying is, you are not weak by any stretch of the imagination or by any stretch of the word. You are not a weakling. You are not a weak-minded. You are not a gullible um, person at all so allow yourself to remember that right 
Okay, that was Virgo. I mean, what what happens here um, at the moment, energetically speaking, and when, and I still have been saying that a lot over the last couple of years here. We oftentimes have overlapping energy, so we go from one star sign to the next, and the energy sort of follows. If that makes sense, right? As it should, if that makes sense, because nothing thrives in isolation, and while star signs can be miles apart um, with regards to what's um, happening in their life um, and yet the energy is oftentimes overlapping so you get a little bit of 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 something from the others and lately uh, in the star signs um, we had a lot of um, looking at your self-esteem looking at your self-worth allowing yourself to feel i'm good right so that seems to be apparent for all star signs uh, or at least for the for the bulk of star signs this week so remember it you are good enough okay that was virgo going into uh, libra i think i said that already didn't i and then got carried away not sure okay sometimes i just lose my plot here so i have to stop the video have a look what the last star sign was and then return in a mini 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 second millisecond um to do the star sign that is meant to be <laughs> coming into libra now let's have a look what we got libra you have the peacock and the elephant in short it is important for you this week to look at how you come across right you have a very kind side uh kind side to yourself <coughs> and yet somehow and said speaking what the guides are, are showing me here is that because you probably probably feel a bit boxed in or maybe even bothered by people and situation you have become a bit um standoffish a bit show offish you you may be a bit more flamboyant than you you normally are simply because you have enough of people's interference and um, sometimes you also don't say how you truly feel and if you are a person that gives then people will become opportunists and unless you tell people what your boundaries are and when you actually tire, they will keep coming. And that's important for Lieblings to realize this week. You can't just act um, and tell people um, <coughs> or show people that you're not tired when you really are, if that makes sense. So that's the, that's the, the one side that I'm getting. And the other thing is that, that instead of putting people in their place is probably a bit too hard but um letting people know that there are boundaries you you um you don't say it that way you you don't say to them look you know um, this is all a bit much um you know and they need to be um, we need to deal with this differently because this is just getting too much for myself you you sometimes wait until it's all too late and then you become standoffish you know sort of Kind of thing and all the guides are saying is that won't solve anything now if you are a libran where you say like i'm the kindest person on earth what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> Beep. right then it becomes internal because the guide showed this to me for this week the last week in february to realize that in instead of being absolutely upfront about how you truly feel you you rather downplay it a little bit right and even by being standoffish it's not a direct phrase that you use and say like okay stop right there and that's what the guides are saying is if people are in your space tell them to stop right okay that was libra going into scorpio Scorpios, 
this is a week where you should get yourself a notepad because that is the week potentially where if you are calm enough and not preoccupied with a million and one things <clears throat> where new ideas will really hit you yeah and i could do this and i could do this and maybe i should do this plan as if there was no COVID. plan as if there were no restrictions on anything plan as if you could travel anywhere at any time and could meet with anyone right so what the guys are saying is be very positive because new ideas will really come to you but also realize even though you're planning for a future that at this point in time is very hard to gauge don't get depressed and disheartened when these restrictions that are placed on all of us make things difficult okie dokie that's all i got for scorpio i just want to um, mention this because obviously for people who followed me um you're probably aware that i that i used to run a lot of circles and so there was a time when i got really depressed because you know now i can't do anything and then i realized that i'm also giving readings online recording these videos online so i could do something online and so in in march this year i'm starting um a circle again but it is online and i'm just bringing this up to really make you realize that you know you might be a bit restricted but there's always something you can do and because this week is a week where the guides are saying to you get no pet we're trying to send you all sorts of things that's when they're asking you to be clever about it okie dokie so that was that for scorpio going into sagittarius here we go For Sagittarius, the guides gave me three cards instead of two. And you have the sacred tree, the sturgeon in the middle, and the drum as the outgoing energy for this week, February the 22nd to the 28th, 2021. Now, Sagittarians, you are safe. You are fully protected. You are also part of something larger than yourself in other words it is the spiritual side of you that really really ought to take center stage okay really important to realize that's my depth that's who i am and that's how i will sustain myself and support myself and that's the life i'm going to live that's what i'm getting strongly for sagittarians is to realize if you wanted a change in anything reach out to your guides tell them that you want to change and that you want and need help because you have the sturgeon in the middle um the, the message is of the sturgeon is that he swims against uh, uh, um, the tide and he has just easily gets onto the ground uh, and you know and can do whatever he wants he is not bound by by um problems if that makes sense so what the guides are saying to you is because this is your middle card here therefore this is your main message and the sturgeon is telling you it doesn't matter if things are hard you get there even if you feel you have to swim against the tide it's not new that you feel you swim against the tide and you don't really um, um, get anything done unless you, you are there 150%. That's not news to you. <clears throat> All the guys are saying is use it to finally live the life that your soul feels you came here to live. And what they show me is all sorts of, of rituals in nature. And um, that that I take this to mean because I don't... I'm not being told you should go to the forest. So I, 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 I feel this, that this is their way of saying it is your spiritual self 
that is important. And because you have the drum, it's the outgoing energy. There's two things, obviously. Um, number one, maybe you really should drum to get a better energy. Use a drum. You can also drum in the woods because of the short me nature. <laughs> but the drum is all about cleansing. And the drum can be read uh, as a clock face. And certain parts of the drum um, invite in certain guides. Certain parts of the drum look into certain areas of your life. Um, so that then means, because they're not, they're not asking you necessarily to look all this up, um, if that makes sense. All they're saying to you, because when the drum comes up, um, is for you to realize that also this is a week to reflect on everything that happened up to this point. And just to stress this again, Sagittarians, what I'm getting from the guides is for you to realize that you may never be truly appreciated until you realize that sometimes being in a smaller group or even being one person that works from the center of your truth is better than being part of something larger but that isn't really you. Okay? That was that for Sagittarians. Now we have Capricorns and Aquarius left. Let's have a look. Capricorns. I just want to say this quickly. Um, you, you, you normally don't see me uh, in my bedroom. I normally sit on tables and all that kind of stuff. But um, but with the beautiful Isabel, which is the, the name of the um, unicorn here, um, <coughs> now living here, uh, so to speak, the energy in the bedroom is super high. And so, therefore, I felt, you know, since we're dealing here with, with spirit, um, I would like to have um, Isabel in the video and do this from here. If that makes sense, right? That doesn't mean I will always do it from here, but um, that's the reason why you all of a sudden um, see me sitting on a bloody bed, right? <laughs> here we go. So, um, Capricorns, you have the frog and the cow. <coughs> we had the frog earlier in another star sign where the guides are saying to you, anything is possible and whatever comes to you or you feel like, I feel this is more me. Um, do it even if you haven't done it before. Don't have any limitations. Times are changing um, very rapidly and, and things are changing very fast. And a lot of people who have had a career for, for decades now find themselves not being able to do that anymore. And my feeling for Capricorns is, is to say like, it is what it is, but I will always be looked after. And I can look after myself. <coughs> because you have the cow as your outgoing animal. Uh, an animal that is, that is revered in, in other parts of the world. And it's all about um, divinity. Which, which in a way, um, this is not just about being divine, but also about divination. About, you know, you, you see the future. You, you can trust the future that is as it un, un, unfurls. And all the guides are saying to, to you is manifest for a better future. Trust that, that um, you know, your now is good and can only get better because you work for it <coughs> and make it happen. Okie dokie. That was uh, Capricorn going into the very last star sign uh, for this week last week of February 2021, 22nd to the 28th of February to, to be precise. We are now in the star sign of Pisces. So we started this video with Pisces. So our very last star sign is now Aquarius. Which is interesting because now Aquarius sort of comes last. When you look at horoscope, it is sort of the first um, star sign if that makes sense and so Aquarians are 
water bearers. You you are the people that um, <laughs> are able to reinvent yourself numerous times without missing a beat. The only thing that may stop you is the human element, the, the worries that we have as human beings. Oh my God, I hope this works, this kind of stuff. All the guides are saying is you, you, you dismiss your, um, your worries unless you feel them in your gut, right? If it's just worries, um, all the guides are saying is you're water bearers. You are people of renewal. You are, you are the beings that other people also look for. Um, for support and you can give so much support and do give so much support to others maybe just give it to yourself for a change right so that's really important because you have the Muldia and the kid fox and the, the, the Muldia is saying to you all you need to do in this last week of February is to be calm about things is to let things play out okay so if you are going through massive changes and you know that there are things coming your way <coughs> that may be um, unprecedented then be calm about it things happen for a reason energetically speaking no, no, nothing here suggests that you are in a um, in any danger of, of not making it if that makes sense because the other thing that the guides are saying because you have the kid fox here which is a fox that lives in the desert and therefore has less opportunities. What they're saying is right now, where you are right now, may feel not so great. So manifest new beginnings because they're ready for you. And you have and if you have already started seeing change, embrace change. The only constant in the universe, the only constant in the universe is change. And it's not the easiest thing to embrace it because of the uncertainty that it brings. And yet, for Aquarians, it seems to be that this is just what's needed. Okay, so that's all we have time for. See you all very soon. Please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Please share this video widely. All right. Thank you very much. See you next week. Bye-bye.